Hey viewers, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today on the workbench, I've got a bronze C2 tape deck, which is a quite, quite a quirky piece, and I thought I'd do a video and, and share it with you guys. Um, if you are following the channel, you know we love tape decks, and uh, specifically things from Nakamichi and Tanberg. And this is the first time uh, I sort of dive into a different brand and um, I'm not sure if it was worth the time or not, but it was certainly a lot of fun to work on this tape deck. And that's essentially why I, I decided to go for a light restoration on it, just because it's quirky cool, and I think someone out there is gonna enjoy this piece beyond that. I didn't want it to end up in the dumpster, so uh, I did spend uh, about half a day getting it back to tip-top shape. Uh, and before putting it on for sale, I thought I'd do a quick video on, on what makes this uh, pretty neat tape deck. So. Braun is a brand that here in the U.S. you might not be familiar with, but it, it's a German brand. Uh, I think it was marketed here in the U.S. as ADS uh, out of Massachusetts. I'm not quite sure why they had two different names for essentially the same product lines, but I, I imagine it has something to do with customer acceptance and, and brand recognition. So um, you will find this series of, of pieces. Uh, branded by uh, ADS here in the United States that were sold in the 90s and so so this is the first one I see in this particular color which is almost like a sand color um, but essentially the same machine as the the ADS branded one now back in the 90s uh, late 80s you could buy a full brawn or ADS system with these components I think it was called the Atelier series and the concept was to essentially uh, create a set of um, aesthetically pleasing uh, units that were stackable that were slim form factor just like the Europeans always wanted um, and um, displayed in your living room without the need for a cabinet so this would have been sold along with a bunch of other pieces including a tuner an integrated amp possibly a receiver and a CD player and they featured a, a back cover that I don't have for this unit, but essentially it was a hinged back cover that was also painted in the same colors, the chassis that would hide all the connections. So if you can imagine stacking four of these together and routing all the wires behind these back panels, you could essentially walk around the unit without seeing any unsightly wires. And I think there was also a table that went with this. So this could potentially sit on a small, um, sort of end table at the edge of the couch uh, where your stereo would would stack. Um, so that's the background on the brand. Uh, the C2 was the only tape deck they made and uh, the most interesting feature on here is the sliding drawer. If you push this button the entire drawer mechanism uh, pops out much like a CD player. And then it gives you access to buttons you only would need maybe during um, playback or recording. So we've got here switches for the B, B, and C uh, to turn the noise reduction on and off. These are three-way toggles. I've got an MPX filter, and then the ability to choose, choose between three different tape um, material types, all the way from ferrite to metal. Um, it's got some really cool lights built into the side so you can see what you're doing at night, even behind the the, the window to see the tape uh, status. And in the front, let me close this back up again. We've got the ability to repeat uh, a memo function and then the reset. So this is uh, some pretty basic early memory recalls. Uh, over here on the right, we've got the controls, transfer controls, including start. Uh, let's see, rewind, stop, start, fast forward, record, and then pause. The slider that we talked about is an actual toggle switch. It's not a push button, temporary. VU meters uh, sit here uh, from minus, obviously, all the way to zero, and then plus all the way to plus two. And then the record uh, line and the record microphone. <laughs> not sure. This is kind of late for a tape deck for microphone inputs, but here you could plug in your uh, microphones in case you wanted to record something live. Um, so these are coaxial. I believe these are coaxial knobs that let you in adjust left and right individually. Yes, it must be because they're not lined up. Here we go. So this is the record uh, for the line, the record for the headphones. So pretty straightforward. Let me put a tape in here. 
show you what's I'll show you the machine in action. Um, I've noticed that you can actually uh, operate it while it's in the out position. So if I go to the start the machine here, we'll start counting. And we can see some activity here on the VU meters. Transport controls are pretty responsive. Pretty straightforward. Now let me put a, actually this is a blank tape, so I can actually put it into record mode. I believe we're gonna push both record and start, and then pause it right there. Um, and you can see we've got a line uh, input, we've got a CD playing onto the, the input, and I can adjust its sensitivity here. There it is peaking uh, plus zero dB or over zero dB. And releasing the pause gets this into recording mode. Let me go ahead and reset the counter. And now you can see we are in fact recording. So pretty basic in terms of functions. It's not a three head system where you can monitor your recording while it's happening. Um, and uh, there's obviously no azimuth controls or any of the advanced features, but it does have a fairly good selection of Dolby and uh, uh, tape types built into it and a very compact chassis. Now looking at the back, a little more detailed. Now this is interesting, even though this is wired for 110 volts, it still has a European plug on it. Um, so I'm not quite sure why this machine, if you look at the sticker in the bottom, does in fact say that it's 110 volts or 120 to 130, yet it still has a European plug on it, which I found that to be a little bit odd. Anyway, prior to shipping this to a client, we will cut this cord out and then put in a conventional uh, US spec cord. And then in the back, just inputs and outputs. Very, very simple RCA for left and right channel. Taking a peek inside. Good construction, nice uh, metal construction throughout, and decent component selection. Here are the Dolby chips here doing the noise reduction, uh, and the playback equalization and amplification. The bias oscillator is in this area. It's got a fairly simple power supply. Decent quality parts, not, not bad. Um, and well laid out, uh, well thought out. Not like some of the uh, Japanese machines that are have a spaghetti of wires going in every single direction. It looks like Braun took their, put some effort behind laying things out nicely. The control board here for the tape transport, which actually moves out with the entire mechanism. Here you can see it activate. motors are visible here. So there are two motors here for the drive and then underneath here is a motor for the drawer itself. Now we, um, we did a light service on this, just kind of checking the components, testing and playback. Uh, we replaced a bunch of belts, actually all three belts within the system were replaced. Um, it's a belt for the cap stand, this one was uh, for the motors and this was for the door system. So um, it did receive, I was able to locate a set of belts for this, which will essentially bring this unit back to its original form. It recorded and, and played really well. And um, here it is, Bronze C2, saved from the scrapyard. Uh, th thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe uh, if you feel that we deserve it and uh, set notifications so that you'll know when our next video pops. And uh, you can visit us online at skyfiaudio.com where you'll see hundreds of uh, pieces of equipment uh, much like this one. Uh, thanks for watching.